Welcome back, everyone. The CBC is taking hits once again for allegations of biased reporting. The state broadcaster's own watchdog says that a journalist from the CBC's French network reported unverified facts about Israel. The group Honest Reporting Canada submitted complaints on five separate stories by Radio Canada reporter Jeanette LaMarche, which aired in December. The CBC dismissed those complaints. And that's when the CBC's ombudsman stepped in. Pierre Tourageau took a closer look at the claims and he found that the stories, quote, did not meet one or the other values of accuracy, balance and impartiality of journalistic standards and practices of Radio Canada. It's time now for The Outsider. Other networks like to brag about having the inside track with their political insiders. Well, here on the Sun News Network, we give a voice to the outsiders in politics because they give you straight talk and no talking points. Our outsider today, the Montreal-based author and columnist Eric Duhame, whose book L'État contre les jeunes was just released. Eric joins us now. So, Eric, uh, you have written on your blog about this ruling from the yeah. Ombudsman. You have read it. Um, give me, please, your take on the report and what you took away from it. Well, it's a very severe uh, report from the Ombudsman for Radio-Canada on five specific reports done by Ginette Lamarche, who's based in Israel. Uh, and, uh, I mean, Tourangeau even went beyond his mandate, that is only to say, is this biased or not, and make a report. He also recommends to, to Radio-Canada to sit down and do something about this reporter, uh, since it's not the first time that it happens. But he's also saying, look, th th this needs to be addressed. This is not uh, simply, you know, just a, a, a small thing. We need, you need to do something. Uh, this is severe. This is biased reporting. Even, believe it or not, uh, Krista, in Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Post had an, uh, a headline on that and an article on, on, on Monday talking about the biased reporting from a Canadian CBC reporter based in Israel. I mean, you know, not only are we paying $1.1 billion a year to the CBC, but they're also making us to be ashamed of what they're doing abroad, and we're now having uh, bad press because of those people by ideological biases. Oh, now what specifically are the journalistic sins uh, that this journalist in question committed here? Well, w one of them, because as I said, it's not the first time. We're talking yes. about five new complaints. There was three other complaints that also came out uh, last November. So this is eight just over the last few months. And uh, one of them, the most severe one, obviously, was the fact that she fabricated a quote. In one of her reporting, she talked about a, a, an Israeli who never ever actually said what she's reporting, and uh, she, uh, CBC had to admit shamefully that uh, this this quote was fabrication. And uh, that's very very. I mean, what's worse in terms of journalism? Think about it. They're fabricating false uh, quotes and they're putting that into their reports just to fit their ideology. That is quite unbelievable. So what should happen? Uh, should she be in front of the well, firing squad? Well, for obviously she should be removed from her, her, her position in Israel because obviously she's not up for the job. She has, she's totally biased and, uh, and seems that one of the most important, if not the most important conflict in the world right now. Uh, second, uh, or sh there could be, I mean, different other sanctions. She could be suspended or she could be simply fired. I mean, this is quite severe. If you're, you know, if you're fabricating quotes, I think it's more than enough to tell somebody, thank you, but you're out of here. Um, it's not, you know, it's not one thing, it's eight things. But the problems, uh, Krista, is that nobody's doing anything at the CBC, you know. Complaints like these ones are coming out one after the other, and they're still backing their reporter no matter what she's saying. So it makes many of us believe that CBC shares, they share our views the, 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 that, uh, you know, on Israel and, and our, our leftist bias. And that is the problem that we also have here. And it's not the first time, and it's, she's not the only reporter. I, she, I think she's kind of the tip of the iceberg on this specific issue. And once again, they're, you know, they're, they're backing her because actually she's saying very out and loud what many, many other bosses at CBC think about what's going on in Israel. And, and it's also very important to understand that for French Quebecers, this reporter has a huge and important mandate because she's one of the very few. There's actually only one other reporter that isn't covering in that region. And the only people that we get directly information from, uh, from that, you know, the most important conflict right now out there is from a, a, a reporter that is completely biased. So our sources are not like in English Canada or in the U.S., 
that you have multiple offers that you can choose and you can you know balance what's right and what's not unfortunately she's one of the very few if not the only source of, of reporting of what's going on firsthand in that region of the world well, just to play devil's advocate here, uh, you know, if you were talking perhaps to her or uh, some journalists inside the CBC who have been posted in Israel, uh, they would say, look, uh, it is commonplace uh, for CBC journalists to be targeted by the, you know, Jewish lobby and the Jewish campaign for our coverage, and we are the victims here. Well, absolutely. That's what she's probably going to claim. But uh, it's not, I mean, the ombudsman is not the Jewish lobby that we're talking about here. It's the guy who's making sure that the standards at the CBC on ethics and, and partiality are respected. And uh, he came out eight times out of eight saying that this girl, this specific reporter is biased. And I could also talk about other reporters and other decisions that came before that, because unfortunately, she, as I said, she is just one out of so many at the CBC right now. And what is even more troubling uh, Krista is that last week while this decision was made up was came out the, the, the president of CBC Radio Canada Hubert Lacroix was in front of the Montreal Board of Trade talking about how ethical and how unbiased is the CBC and bashing bashing private media he was bashing the competition and and talking and bragging about how, un, how unbiased they are while his own ombudsman is calling him back and saying look I'm sorry but look what's going on in your own backyard and this is also a problem right now. You know, the CBC, it's do what, do what we say, not what we do. And uh, now they're screaming. They want more money. They always, they're bashing the, the people who are, are working against them, even if they're doing unfair competition. And they're not taking uh, anything, you know, they're not doing anything against the own problem that is contaminating the organization in terms of political ideology within the CBC. Well, and the fact that we're only learning about this ruling, uh, I only learned of it today from from reading your blog, Eric, I think uh, speaks volumes. I mean, why isn't there more reporting on this ombudsman ruling? And I would dare say it's because it's not the kind of story that friends of the CBC, i.e. their allies within the mainstream media, want to highlight to the public view. No. There is another story, though, that some of their friends in the mainstream media do want to highlight. Um, I understand I've been making some headlines in the Quebec media over the last week. I'm being called a baboon, among <laughs> other things. How rude. Um, <laughs> thank you for highlighting the amount of public money uh, that has gone into a film that is produced by Quebec based uh, film company called Microscope uh, and is nominated for an Oscar. Uh, enormous amounts of public money. The total budget was about three and a half million and uh, at least 2.35 million plus tax credits went into this film. Um, so we've been discussing this issue on byline. Unbeknownst to me, it's blown up in Quebec as an issue and I'm being called a baboon. But give me a little perspective on this. Have I gone after an even bigger no. sacred cow than Margie Gillis? Uh, I didn't Krista know. Krista, you're doing your job. You're, you're, you know, you're giving your opinion. You're doing that. You're not like what we saw at the CBC. You're not a reporter re talking about what happened. You're giving your opinion. This is, you know, is TV to give your own opinion. And they're bashing you because they don't like your opinion and they want to muzzle you, believe it or not. And on the other hand, when those people at the CBC are supposedly reporters, they're supposedly neutral, they supposedly have a code of ethics this thick. Well, what's going on when they don't respect their own r rules? They don't say a word. The same reporter that are bashing you didn't write a single word about what's going on right now at the CBC. So wonder why. It's because of their political ideology. I mean, this is purely people who are biased and their report are biased as, 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 you know, as, as the CBC actually. And surprisingly, many of those come from La Presse that has a secret agreement with the CBC. They have a corporate agreement, believe it or not, because La Presse is, is favored by the French CBC. Uh, the, 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 you know, the secret agreement came out a few months ago. So those reports Reporters have a link, and they also, you know, do their own uh, gigs at uh, at CBC as well. So it's kind of very, very weird to see this incestuous uh, relationship in the media. And it's not surprising that at the end of the day, they come out with opinions that are completely out of line, and they're attacking you instead of attacking people who are supposed to report honestly and are not right now. Well, thanks so much for highlighting this very important ombudsman ruling, and uh, I, I'm sure, I hope we will be hearing more about it and discussing it more in the days ahead. I thank, hope so. Thank, thank you, you, Eric. Merci, au revoir. Our political outsider and Montreal-based columnist, Eric Duhaime, the author of the book Les Tacs contre les jeunes, comes to us live from our bureau in Montreal.